Hi, this is Robert Palenik doing a Brutal Iron Gym. I'm doing a pull day, so it's rear delts, back, and biceps today. And I wanted to share three tips from today's workout that I thought could help your workouts. Tip number one is to start with a weakness. So in today's workout, I'm doing the pull muscles, which is rear delts, back, and biceps. I'm going to start with the rear delts. They're a weaker muscle in regards to development for me. So not necessarily physically weak, but it can be developmentally weak. I want to start with that at the beginning of the workout when I have great amount of energy to give to that weakness. I also like doing that because typically our weaknesses are smaller body parts. I can give that effort, uh, give that body part a great effort and not overly exhaust myself for the rest of the workout. What it does is it actually kind of warms up my body, it warms up my mind. As I'm getting into those harder sets for that weaker group, I'm producing more adrenaline, more endorphins, so that's more aggression and more painkillers, uh, natural painkillers. So after I get the rear delts in, I know I brought that weakness up with full intensity and full effort, and now my mind and my body are primed to give great efforts into that bigger group, which is typically what I place second. So on a pull day, it would be rear delts are first, then back, then biceps. If you have a leg day, maybe your calves are weak, so you would place them first. So something that you think is a lagging body part or weak body part, you would do it first, so that way you can give it the best energy, get your mind and your body ready for the rest of the workout. Tip number two is to pay attention to your shoulder movement during back exercises. If you want to work across your upper back, meaning the muscles of your lower traps, rhomboids, rear delts, the muscles across the shoulder blades, and that's typically done when you're doing rows, you want to allow your shoulder to actually extend at the extension of the movement, and then think of squeezing between the shoulder blades to drive that shoulder back, and then you would finish with the elbow pull. So a proper row, a proper movement for the mid-back allows the shoulder blades to stretch and contract. However, <laughs> if you want to aim for the lats, if you're trying to grow the lats down here, then we actually want to hold our shoulder kind of in place. And typically these movements are done up and down, whereas a row is horizontal. So an up and down movement or a movement for the lats, you're going to kind of think of your shoulder joint staying in place and you're going to let your upper arm bone, which is what the lat's connected to, let it raise and then try to drive it down. Raise and drive it down. What you'll notice is the shoulder doesn't move much and the elbow doesn't go past the body. So it kind of contracts and stops here. Since the lat is connected to the upper arm bone, the closer the upper arm bone gets to the body, the more the lat is contracted. If I were to try to drive my elbow back, the upper arm bone is actually getting away from the body. So that would actually indicate that I'm allowing my lat to release tension. So the tip number two is to pay attention to your shoulder movement. If you want the mid-back muscles, the shoulder should stretch and contract during the movement. If you want the lat, the shoulder is probably going to stay in place and you're just going to focus on the upper arm bone extending and contracting, but stopping when the upper arm bone is next to the body. The third and final tip is for workout focus. <laughs> if you struggle to stay focused in your workouts, one of the ways I combat that is to do unilateral movements. So I'll train one arm, then the other arm, or one leg, then the other leg. I'll also do other techniques like supersetting exercises, whether it's for the same body part or unrelated body parts. The benefit of unilateral movements, the benefit of supersetting is while one limb or one exercise is taking a break, the other limb or the other exercise is doing its work. So therefore you can shorten your rest time and then that helps you stay more active, helps you stay more focused. It also helps you burn more calories in the workout I don't know to what significant amount that's going to be in regards to if your goal is calories burned for fat loss, I think you're better off focusing on nutrition and muscle damage to fuel calorie usage in repairs, but it's still a factor. It's still a way to burn more calories in your workouts. But that would be tip number three to maintain better focus in your training, to do unilateral movements or to superset 
related or unrelated exercises. Hopefully all of these tips are helpful. If you want to learn more, you can check out our daily podcast. It has over 300,000 downloads, soon to be 2,000 episodes, which is crazy. So 2,000 episodes on nutrition, training, mindset, and listener Q&A. So if you check out the podcast, you can always send in a request, and I'll be happy to make a video for you. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy all these techniques, and good luck.